Greetings, comrades. My name is Regantles, and this video, um, I know I've, I know I've moaned a lot about these signing cards and given a brief intro into what they believe, but never actually did a proper video as to what they are, uh, as to basically their belief system, what they believe, and a little bit of the history. So that's why I'm gonna I'm doing this video to basically give you a little bit of backstory of who these signing cards is, what they believe, and why they're wrong. So. I'm actually, if you want to know the side I'm looking at right now, it's basically the Christian and Apologetics Alliance. Now, it doesn't matter what the nomination you are from. The, the Easter Lightning cult is definitely one of those, uh, one of those cults that all Christian denominations should work against, because it, we're we're all in danger. And the last thing we need is that even if we even if we disagree with, the, with Protestantism, the last thing we want is our Protestant brothers to try to suffer under the hands of this cult. So. The cult is, um, the cult actually goes by several names. I, mean, I usually call the East Lightning Cult for um, shortness and because it's uh, it's easy to remember, but they go by the names. So there's the original Church of Almighty God, Church of the True God, Church of the Everlasting Fountain, and apparently Real God, which is a bit odd. Its members are predominantly in Southeast Asia, which is which is one of the main reasons is how you can actually find them uh, when, when, they, when they try and get into Christian groups and stuff. One of the, one of the easiest ways to recognize, one of the easiest ways to keep to keep an eye out for them is to look for Easter for Southeast Asian members that are typically shot in a okay not trying to they get their pictures of their pictures of them and their profiles are typically shot in professional environments. There's definitely um some uncertainty about how many there are, especially in China. They say there's um there's apparently the uh, million members or so in China, or uh, although some say there's a hundred thousand members. A bit weird. Um. Okay, so the founder of this cult, the cult was founded a. Uh, by a person called Zhao Weishan, which, as I said before, he believes that God has come back in the, in the form of a woman, based upon Matthew twenty four twenty seven. For his lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west. So will the coming of the Son of Man be? Now, the woman in question, her name is Yang Jiangbin, and she's known as a female Christ. In in order to try and give you an idea of the context of who they who they, what they actually think of this woman. They believe that it's it's kind of like um, I guess modalism almost, in that this cult believes that Yahweh or Jehovah, as you should call him, uh, was the he was God in the Old Testament. Okay, that was the mode of God in the Old Testament. Then Jesus Christ was the was the mode of God in the New Testament, and then they believe that Almighty God, as they sometimes call this woman, uh, she's meant to be the third mode of God in this in this era. Okay, so high hopes for this woman. Apparently she fled to the um, to the United States like 15 years ago or so. I can't know exactly when this. No wait. No. Okay, so she fled. To, she. This was this was all in China, okay. And she apparently fled to the. Um, she fled to the uh, to the United States in two in around 2000, obviously AD. And she's basically she's been effectively running a cult from there. So she's she's a bit cowardly in that sense, in that whereas. With Saint Peter, he ran his church from literally the capital of the empire that was trying to persecute him, whereas this woman just flees and leaves her court members behind. Well, that tells a lot about a about character. The East Lightning Cult has its own book called "The Word Appears in the Flesh," the word uttered by God who came hiddenly in the end time, which is definitely something I'm not going to remember because it's way too long. It was published in originally in. Sorry, I, th I swear, I thought, I thought I heard footsteps behind me. Anyway, so apparently the British original title release of this book was on the February 28th, 1992, and the English one was from January 29th, 2008. Now, there's three, there's several sections of this book. There's the preface, attached pieces one to three, interpretation of the mystery of God's word, and or attached pieces of God's word 16, 6, 14, and the words of the incarnated son of man during his walk in the churches. This book has got too many long titles. I'm not going to even remember any of these. Like, seriously? So, and I'm quoting it from the website. In 1991, Almighty God of the Last Christ, who was incarnated in China, began to work, uttering his voice and speaking. He has expressed millions of words at the start of the work of judgment before the great white throne in the, in the end time. The Church of Almighty God came into being because of the returned Lord Jesus, the end time Christ, Almighty God's appearing and work, and also under Almighty God's righteous judgment and chastisement. And this is from apparently quotes from both the Word appears in the flesh and the New Testament of so of the, the actual Bible, which means that they try and they, they consider this, their work to be on par with the Bible. 
which is strange because they, they actually reject, they, they pretty much reject the New Testament, the rest of the New Testament. They're kind of like Muslims in the sense that their Muslims will pick and will pick and choose every single quote in the Old Testament, that, no, in the New Testament that says uh, that says Jesus was a prophet, and then they'll conveniently forget about all the other quotes that hint Jesus, that, that, that hints Jesus to being an actual son of God and being divine and everything. And they kind of do this for, for and the Islamic cult pretty much does this themselves. So, their beliefs. So they believe that Jesus Christ is a creative being, which means that it's basically effectively a form of Arianism. Arianism, whatever. The Trinity is a false doctrine. Obviously, if you if you take something like this, which you, you, I guess it's kind of in a sense between modalism and subordinationism, in it, um, which means that the Trinity could, for them the Trinity cannot exist. Jesus did not complete his work on Earth, so God sent a woman, Jesus's sister, apparently, to complete his six thousand year plan to save humanity. Which sounds very fundamentalist, especially um, how if they were actually following the original Bible, they would know that the Earth, taking a literal reading of Genesis and all those books, would be around seven thousand two hundred years old. But that clearly shows their later beliefs. Because Jesus did not complete his work on Earth, salvation through the sacrifice of Christ of Jesus on the cross is not effective in saving a person's soul. Now, we'll admit, this is, this may be a little bit influenced by Protestantism. So, we're not actually sure what the what the church, what the like Islam called. It says in regards to um, faith and works being, being uh, contributing to salvation. But, definitely the idea that Jesus' Christ sacrifice on the cross didn't save all of us. Um, or rather, it's not it's not effective enough. Again, we, we Catholics believe that it does. It does, but you need to actually accept it. You need to actually follow his commandments. To prove that you love him and that you are accepting what he says, so the idea that Jesus Christ didn't do enough in that regard, in Catholic view, is definitely is definitely wrong. Jesus did not rise from the dead and will not return again. What? That Jesus is dead? Really? That's stupid. God has already returned to the earth as a Chinese woman, Yang Xiangbin. I don't know if that's how you pronounce the name. I apologize if it's wrong. Okay, if I said wrong. The Bible is outdated and not authoritative. Or authoritative. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the Catholic Church is built upon the three pillars of tradition, Bible, and magisterium. But to... Obviously, it's for the Protestants. The idea that the Bible is outdated and not, and not enough is gonna, it's definitely going to rub in the wrong way. The Christian Mission Organization China for Jesus details some of the beliefs of Easter Lightning here. Okay, I actually read the link that this comes from, so I'm just going to click on this link quickly and give you a summary of this. There are three stages, the three eras in God's plan. The first is the era of law, which is when God is called Jehovah. You can tell the quality of them as something's really teachings that they believe that Jehovah is a valid name for God. They believe that God is called Jehovah and he worked through his spirit and revealed himself to God. He said he was the law and spoke to through the prophets and deals our responsibility to follow the law. Uh, even though we couldn't, which is right to a degree. I mean, pff, Jerusalem was destroyed. Uh, like, how many years? How many years after was the last of the test? How many years after the establishment of the Sinai of the Lord Sinai was Jerusalem destroyed? It was. It was like almost eight hundred years or something. It was like eight hundred years. So clearly, we couldn't follow the law properly. The era of grace which was God's name was changed to Jesus, and he came through and came to man in the incarnation, he worked through his physical body. It was our responsibility to, to follow up to know and believe Jesus, but instead we rejected him and condemned him. And then the third era is the era of the kingdom, which is now, he, God is now called the Almighty One and the practical God. And so God is, a, God is a spirit, apparently. Jesus was a man. He has been resurrected and ascended to heaven, what? This is definitely, this is definitely strange. Maybe they don't believe that Jesus was resurrected because he never died in the first place, which would sound a bit more like docetism, to be honest. How can something be docetistic and Arianistic, in that sense? I'm just going to classify it under, under subordinationism or something. This is confusing. Because Jesus is resurrected in heaven, he is vague and distant, so there is, has to be a new Christ to carry out his judgments and stuff on earth, which is the female Christ. She is tangible, more substantial, and, and, uh, and calls herself a practical god, She's a dwelling, she's God dwelling in the flesh for the second time. She reveals God's righteous nature, speaks to mankind, speaks judgments of God's house. To conquer the whole universe, to bring destruction to the world, and to reign over all the earth. Okay, that's a, uh, okay. 
So Jehovah has been replaced with this practical God. They replaced Jesus with the female Christ, and they replaced the word of God in the Bible with the word spoken by their almighty God. Now the responsibility of man is to follow the female Christ, and only if he forsakes his faith in Jesus Christ, says his Bible in public, called himself the son of the devil, is conquered by fully submitting himself to the spoken words of the, of the female Christ, and thus becomes victorious one, he can enter the kingdom that has been established on earth by the female Christ. Yeah, this is definitely written by Protestants, so if it sounds very Protestant, then, then, it's, then that's what it sounds like. Okay. So your pro the, the moral, moral lifestyle. They curse their parents as descendants of beasts. They sell themselves for immorality. They see that since the era kingdom has come, as the God has said, the era grace is over, and therefore marriage and family life should be ended. That sounds very much like Catharism, actually. Oh dear. They promise to match people up with new spouses and accept their teachings, and thus each member should abandon his or her own family. That's definitely cultic behavior right there. If you cut yourself off from your family, if you're encouraged to cut yourself off from your family, then that's definitely cultic behavior. Hmm. Well, with, with what little conscience and sense of the heart, many of the sea people have stayed at the Eastern Island to spare their own family, family members' lives. Oh dear. They are forced and some are chosen to exert their full strength to carry out assignments given they are given by the Eastern Lightning. Some men and women are assigned to sexually seduce their targets and they all become playthings in the hands of the teachers. The main of them are called venereal diseases, syphilis and AIDS as a result of going through what they call the spirit beds and many happy families and marriages have been destroyed this way. Base belief means of gaining converts. They result to, shame, to many shameful and lewd methods of, uh, and their cruelty is, inhum is inhumane. Is inhuman. Is inhuman. They justify any means for the purpose of promoting the cult and gaining new converts. They habitually lie, they deceive women with false promises of marriage, they practice sexual con seduction, they even use sexual stimulants, drugs, to, drag, to drag people into immorality and undermine their faith. Sometimes they take photos in secret, or they even create erotic pictures of computers to blackmail for those who don't want to follow them. In, these, in all these ways, they deceive and undermine their, victim, their victims. Groups of these slightly members design sophisticated traps to capture people, and they, catch, and they lead their victims into delusions due to the use of powerful mind-altering drugs. They depressing ghosts, they use threats, violence, kidnappings, forced confinement, varying from length of time of, uh, from one month uh, to three years, and whatever means possible to empower people in the build their own following. Strict terrorist organization. Their organization is secret and strict, and tightly hierarchical, and tightly hierarchical, hierarchical. Hierarchical. There's a hierarchy, okay? They, with the words of the female Christ, it's the highest authority, and with the restrictions of the rigid rules, the master controls, the members of the cult are absolutely submissive to their powerful one, Zhao Wai Shan. They, may, they maintain the following through drugs, sex, and violence. They must destroy the church, overthrow governments, and bring the whole world into subjection to the female Christ, so that the so that all the victorious ones who follow and give their lives to her can reign with her one day on earth. On the earth. Significantly, they have also won over the police and government officials in many areas through money and women. Once these officials accept their teaching and become members of the East Lightning, they will begin to serve the cult and the protection and of the protection in secret. Due to the East. Right, sorry, sorry about that, guys. Um, my phone is overheating, so I had to basically let my phone call for a few minutes. Uh, just continue. On. So as I was saying, East Lightning Cult basically has a lot of. Um, of influencing governments, uh, official with government officials and the police, and because they're very secretive, especially in China, it's quite hard to catch them all. Violence and terror. The Eastern Lightning, the Eastern Lightning followers are like gangsters and terrorists. There is theirs is an evil collage of deception, immorality, terrorist violence, murder, and control through using drugs. They try to murder all who betray them. Many people have been injured, maimed, disabled, and murdered in mainland China. This has created severe harm to society and brought great threat. To people's lives and safety. This has also caused serious panic and damage to the house churches in China as a whole. This cult ignores the state law, treats human life as worthless, and looks upon the maiming and saving of human bodies as being fun games. They are truly guilty of terrible sins and crimes. So they're, they're, very, they're, they're particularly vicious, this cult. I mean, quite. Definitely someone you should keep an eye out for. Now, there's actually, there's actually quite a lot of good stuff in terms of that information that you're going to get on this one and cult. I just found the characteristics. Let me read you the link of this. Let me read you the link of this website. The characteristics of the Easter Lightning Cult in its different stages or phases and our countermeasures. Oh my! Wow. Okay. Um, I'll make another video about this. This is very interesting. I'm looking at here. Very interesting. Uh, 
definitely a lot of information about these cycle I'll cover at times. The methods to use to lure people and stuff, I'll cover that another time. But something I need to some the problem about this specifically about this video. I'm not I'm not done yet, don't worry. The point about this video specifically is um is what these psycho believes and what they're trying to do. Okay. Something I will say is that there are plenty of uh, saliva testimonies about East Lightning Cult and what they do. There's a particularly vicious one that, um, whenever I find East Lightning Cult member trying to post stuff, and, um, I don't know why I always sit so fast from the screen and why I tilt my head. There you go. Something I, I do find a lot of, um, is the saliva testimonies for East Lightning Cult. When I see East Lightning Cult members trying to promote their stuff in the Facebook group, I usually do a very critical comment of their cult and trying to basically try and let Almost to, to, to label them so everyone else knows who they are, and I put a link as to um, one of these side testimonies. And it's pretty, it's a pretty sad thing. This side testimony. Um, this woman says that a pe it's basically from a, a pastor. Okay, he's telling a perspective. He says that he encountered a woman uh, who was um, you apparently she tried well, she wanted to leave the cult, and but the people didn't want her to, so they broke her legs to stop her leaving. And uh, another another person ended up did helping her leave the cult. But she's she's still recovering and she's in danger from them while she's in China. So this called Stephanie. It's going to be quite vicious. He's trying to keep their members with them. Um, and another testimony that I maybe expand a little bit more upon uh, when I do another video concerning how these science cults trying to seduce people and everything. Basically, they are uh, this testimony I read about. It says that the this group of missionaries were called by a cult member. They didn't realize what the cult member said. Oh yeah, there's a uh, missionary opportunities in this area. So come with us. So they went there. And I think there were three men and two women. And when he got to the location, the Lightning Cult members, these Lightning Cult members separated them up into, into, into individual people. And he started working on them individually. And they were used, uh, they used physical and emotional and psychological torture. They got men drunk and they had to, to intoxicate, intoxicate them. And then they forced them to sleep in women with uh, sleep with, in rooms with naked women. So that this cramped into rooms so small that you couldn't move without being on top of a woman. And in an attempt to try and get, try and get them to do something. And if they did, then uh, then there'll be pictures and videos, and they'll be blackmailed uh, using those pictures. They also used they also used drugs, and they refused to let people sleep, and they were constantly trying to brainwash the people in the uh, missionaries into trying to change and trying to convert. And it's it's quite it's quite heartbreaking when you read about what some of these people, what these poor missionaries have gone through. Some people have said that uh, one of the things that the mission, uh, one of the big differences between missionaries nowadays, missionaries in the past, is that the missionaries in the past had to deal with uh, literally pagan culture at its strongest when trying to convert people. But I guess it's wrong to say that it's probably wrong to say that um, that we, the missionaries, have nowadays have it easier, especially when there are cults out there who are pretty much they use the same methods as the pagans used to. Uh, to try and bring, try and convert missionaries, try and torture them, force them to change. But now they're mimicking Christ. Well, that's, that's right. Now they're trying to mimic. Uh, they're basically claiming to be part of Christ. Here. They're, tr they're trying to lure people in by claiming they are part of Christ, but they do the exact opposite of what Christ would have wanted. And it's, it's quite concerning this. Because, again, these people are going to be. One of the reasons why missionaries need to go through a lot of teaching. And education on how to preach is that they're going to be them how people judge the religion from okay they're going to judge them by the missionaries and if you have missionaries like in, in the past missionaries who were sacrificed for their who were martyred for their faith and people are going to be inspired to follow those those who, who are so willing to follow their faith and preach the good news and others that they'll die for it but this no this is this is going to completely undermine christianity especially in, in regions like china and then um, the house churches basically it's you can't really um you can't really have proper churches in China without the Chinese government trying to control you. And so people do secret churches. They basically get the group to, they meet together in um, in houses and they, and they secretly worship in, in in those houses, meet up in different locations on a frequent basis that the government doesn't catch them. Unfortunately, because of that sea level of secrecy in the underground and the underground nature of the church, it's quite hard to deal with two fronts. On one front, you have to deal with um, with trying to keep staying hidden from the east from the from the Chinese government, and on the other front, you have literally like right behind you, you have to deal with these cultists trying to continuously uh, bring people in and seduce them and trap people. It, it's 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 quite it's quite hard for those poor people in China, for those poor Protestant brothers in China. Excuse me. Okay, my phone's overheating. Got to do this part quickly. So it's a bit it's a bit sad what this poor cult has, what these poor uh, people in China have to deal with. So please pray for our, for our for our brothers and sisters in China that they be kept strong and deal with this cult as appropriate. And they can, and they be able to be safe. And this cult is dealt with quickly, because it's concerning. 
just just the, just the heresies alone they believe, but also how they enact upon it, how they carry it out, how they carry out their beliefs, how they try and bring people into gold. It's all about seduction of, or, or forcing people. And that's concerning. We need to pray that this def, this satanic cult definitely goes. Okay, we have to pray for this and also educate ourselves on what they believe and what, what they've done, their methods, so that we can just... It's actually sounds to try and isolate them. We need to isolate this cult so that they gradually just die out. Okay, we, we need to try and do that because we definitely can't use... We can't order a crusade against them, okay? That's not going to work. We have, we, have to, we have to isolate this cult. We have to isolate their beliefs beneath them. Then we can try and bring people back across and just try and isolate their leadership from their members. And that starts to try and understand what they believe. And I, I've already explained to this video their, their basic premises for their beliefs. So please make sure you understand what they believe. Keep an eye for what they do. Educate others what they believe. Know why they're wrong. And don't fall for any of their paths. So my phone's going to start flashing about this overheating again. Anyway, so... That's pretty much for you. So if you like this video, please give a like, please share my videos, please comment, please give them as you want me to do. Please go to my channel, please subscribe to my channel so you can see more of this content, please ring well so you can keep up with video releases. Next episode, I'm going to tell you how they try and lure people in and how to counter it. But that'll be for then. So hopefully my phone won't blow up now. I really don't want it to. Um, anyway, see you next video, comrades. What's then?